Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Eye of Africa. I am your host, Aina Fadina. Welcome to another episode of Eye of Africa. I am your host, Aina Fadino. Today we're at Serengeti in Harlem, and we're going to be talking to Mimi Planch. She's a Ghanaian-born American designer, and we will be discussing her creativity and her life as an entrepreneur. This should be an insightful, wonderful conversation. Hi, Mimi. How are you? I am so good and so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, we've been trying to make this interview happen forever now. <laughs> But, it has been forever. Yeah, but it's all good. We're here. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, Mimi. Who's Mimi Planch? Well, I was born in Ghana, and I came to um, the United States when I was five years old. I grew up in Southern California. And, um, and you know, when I was little, I, I definitely had the, the fortune of being exposed to, like, a lot of arts and um even though we had like you know very humble beginnings, I had um, family members that were into music, and and my mom was a model before, and she loved fashion, and um, and my uncle was an architect and um, and a musician, and so you know from an early age I was already into music and into art, and um, but I hadn't really discovered like what a fashion designer was, mm -hmm. and. Um, and over time, um, my mom and I, just, you know, watching things, we saw um, a Valentino fashion show. It was the first time I saw him walk out, and I was just like, I think I was like 11. And I just knew when I saw him walk down the stage and just how everyone was reacting to the clothes. And, and I, just, I just felt like I wanted to do that, you know? I just knew. And I had it in my head, and I remember growing up, and... And my mom kind of telling me, I don't know if that's like a real career, but, um, and you know, there was like deterring and all that stuff, but I would be in my room, you know, looking through magazines and I was like, I know that this is what I'm going to be doing, you know, no matter what. And so, um, I just did research. I just, you know, I discovered, um, that Gianfranco Frey mm -hmm. had been an architect and I was like, and because my uncle had deeply influenced me, um, I just decided I was going to, you know, when I went to college, I'd mm. study architecture because I felt like that was a breakaway I into see. fashion. And, um, and so um, I did that, but all my intentions were right. always, you know, around fashion. And right after that, I went to fashion school mm. and I moved to New York a month later after I graduated from, um, from there. Mm. And, um, well, I started, well, let me go back. I, I did, I had my degree in architecture from UC Berkeley first, okay. oh, and then wow. I went to fashion school, and then um, I moved to New York, and I came to New York, like, when I was 22, with big <laughs> dreams, and I came by myself, I didn't know anyone here, and I just thought, mm. um, you know, I probably had like $400 or something, and, and, I, and I guess I, I just was like, I'm going to get a job when mm -hmm. I come here, and I did get a job the third week I was here, I was um, working as a merchandiser, okay. and so I started out as an assistant designer, okay. and I grew in the industry, and I worked in the industry for about 11 years oh, wow. before we decided to launch our own brand, right. and I moved all the way from an assistant all the way to a VP of design, and so I knew a lot about the business, mm -hmm. and um and I just knew that, you know, anyone starting a fashion line was going to be crazy. And I just felt like when it was the time, um, my business partner and I, we just decided, let's just, you know, mm -hmm. let's just do it. Mm -hmm. So. I love you like la 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 la. I love, I love, I love you like la 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 la. I love you like la 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 la. Do you think the education you got from a business standpoint mm -hmm. allowed you to, for your business to grow to the capacity to where it is today? Um, I think that we've been really thoughtful in, in our approach, and I think that we've been willing to be flexible. Mm -hmm. And I do think that working in the industry definitely helped a lot because I saw, I've worked for companies that have grown from the very beginning to $65 million companies, oh, wow. and I've you know worked at companies that... Um, went out of business, yeah. and that's very, you know, not good for them, but Absolutely. good to see. Absolutely. Um, and 
really learn that when you're a designer, at the end of the day, you have to be able to work with a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the main things. It's being able to navigate through people and mm -hmm. always coming up with solutions. We're seeing that in the business of fashion is in the last three years, there's this whole shift that's happening. I don't, I don't think anyone knows what's happening in the fashion <laughs> business at the moment. Um, what are your thoughts on the changes that are happening? What's changing is that it's really difficult for new designers to break into, right. you know, into things. And so what can we do? Have, how can we change the experience mm -hmm. of our customer? Mm -hmm. and I think it's great because you have to understand who your consumer is and that consumer changes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, her needs change. And how do you reflect the changes that are happening within her as a woman, as she grows and evolves into who she is as a person? I think you you start with your core customer mm -hmm. and then you um, she will need different things over time. Things will change and you want to adapt to that, but I think you never want to leave your um, original thought process either. Mm -hmm. But you do want to evolve too and add new things to the table, but only if they relate you know, to your brand mm -hmm. as a whole and they can make sense. And so I think you have to pick and choose. You may not be able to cover everything, but um, I think if you see responses, if you see that people, a lot of people would, you know, a lot of people want to be more casual now. Yeah. You know, for evening wear, does evening wear have to be a gown? You know, like, can evening wear be like a beautiful skirt and maybe, you know, a woven shirt with like some kind of embroidery on it? Like a new way to dress that's like separate and casual, but still really done up and beautiful, which is, you know, how we're seeing things because we see people as wanting a, a level of comfort now mm -hmm. in, in their clothes, but still having that distinctive beauty. And where is the middle ground? How do we get to that yeah. point? So yeah. um, that's just kind of how we're seeing the you know evolution of our customer. We know that she has to, you know, she's going to work every day. She's a global woman. She's yeah. intelligent. She mm -hmm. loves art. She's educated. Mm -hmm. um, but she also wants a level of comfort because she has a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> She's busy. And so she doesn't have time to think about her outfit all day long yeah. and things like that. People are into experiences now. They don't have mm -hmm. time to be, you know, um, oh my God, I have to do this and I have to wear this. And it's just, it needs to be an easier process yeah. and it just needs to be beautiful. Yeah. So it's about establishing a point where you can, you know, create that and, um, and you know, deliver it to people, and people really feel you know good about what they have on their bodies. Absolutely. You know, so, so when we talk about the globalization of fashion, you mentioned the globalization of your woman, uh, or just globalization of the creative industries as a whole. What are your thoughts on what's going on globally? I think the world is getting smaller, and um, because of that, I think that you, as a, a creative and as a designer, you have more um, you have more opportunity, mm -hmm. and um, of course, America is a huge market, and then there's markets in other places, and I think that you can also look at building your business differently in that aspect, too. Maybe the style of your clothes can, you know, do really well in Russia. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe people may really like it, and you can may maybe start there mm -hmm. because of the internet and all right. those things. You can do different things. You can come into places differently, and I just feel like... The globalization, it's its good, but I think it also makes everything just smaller and tighter, mm -hmm. and um, and that could be good right. and bad, but um, but at the end of the day, I think it's its a little easier to touch a lot more people now than it's ever been, right. so I think it's a good thing. And are you going to expand to West Africa, Ghana? What are, you, what are your thoughts on... Oh, well, those are the dreams and the goals, the ultimate goals. Um, the only thing I can say about that is for us being based here in New York, mm -hmm. I think it's just a time process for mm -hmm. us. Like we have to, for me, I think we would have to be there. We make everything in New York right now. Mm -hmm. I'm in the factories all the time. Mm -hmm. I need to see, I need to touch things. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff that we do is about texture. It's about surface. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, things. So in order for me to do it properly with the style of clothes that we do, I would have to go there very often. Right. And so um, it's something that we're, you know, starting slowly and we're starting it with handbags, which we're launching this year. And um, and we'll see how it grows, but I would love to eventually, you know, have a big part of our production mm -hmm. being done on the continent. Mm -hmm. And so, but I'm patient, and I think that it'll happen over time.
So it, it sounds like you're evolving from architecture to designer to a lifestyle brand. We do see ourselves as a lifestyle brand mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be able to sell many things, mm -hmm. not just fashion. Mm -hmm. I just think that people need stimulation on mm -hmm. a lot of different levels now. Mm -hmm. I just think in order to be successful, I mean, I meet entrepreneurs and they have like four businesses, yeah. you know, and people like, so it's not just, it's just a different time. And Absolutely. now it's like, you know, you can plant seeds in a lot of different ways. Right. So how does your identity as a Ghanaian, as a Ghanaian-born, mm -hmm. American, mm -hmm. global <laughs> citizen of this world, mm -hmm. how does that influence the craft, the creativity of your design? Now, for me, I think that that's like really special because the way that um, there's been a lot of times if you look at the designs that I do just as a whole, you can just say this is like a beautiful collection, but not necessarily know that it was inspired by Africa mm -hmm. until I tell you. Yes. Um, and it's that way. Specifically, I'm not going, I'm not only looking at East Africa or, or West Africa or any specific countries mm -hmm. necessarily mm -hmm. because what I'm doing is taking design elements of the ancient past, yeah. like, you know, how we used to decorate our body. And I'm pulling mm -hmm. from all mm -hmm. different types of places mm -hmm. because I live in America and it's a melting pot and Absolutely. I'm going to design that way too. I'm not going to give you the authentic only that because I, that's not my story. Mm -hmm. I can only see it as crossing and mixing all these things because I've been crossed and mixed and mm -hmm. lived here and did this. And, you know, so I'm giving my perspective as a designer on what I'm really trying to do in my designs is look at past, you know, cultural depictions of beauty, mm -hmm. body modification, mm -hmm. scarification, mm -hmm. things that people might have thought were not beautiful, mm -hmm. um, why are you doing this to your body, mm -hmm. but not understanding that, you know, even scarification itself was seen as like an erotic thing, mm -hmm. like if you're, if you were able to take that amount of pain right. and what it means and how the texture feels on yeah. your skin. All these things are beautiful things, mm. but you don't know. All you're doing is just looking at, okay, this is, you know, mm -hmm. you're cutting the skin. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, we can go deeper and find beauty in things. Absolutely. You know, it's not anyone else's choice of what's beautiful or what's not. And so I want to take those things and make them into something really, really modern. Mm -hmm. And I don't want it to look like anything, mm -hmm. but I want my reference to always be there. And I know where it's coming Absolutely. from. And for other people to be able to connect with it on a lot of different levels. Right. But the most important level, it's just that it's beautiful. Right. So what advice can you give to young, not young, but what advice can you give to <laughs> aspiring, aspiring creatives and entrepreneurs? Um, The first most simple thing I think is um, just really having that strong sense of belief in yourself. I mean, because it's the only thing that's going to keep you going because people are going to tell you they don't like what you're doing and all, I mean, it's a balance. It's like you have to listen, but then you don't have to take everything that mm -hmm. people tell you, but you should be open, you know, um, but also you don't have to get information from everybody either. I mean, if you're looking for success then ask somebody who's successful, Success. you know, who, because, I mean, they've been there yeah. or they've, you know, had a similar experience. So be careful where information comes from because mm -hmm. everybody has an opinion or not, when they're not actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would say be humble, you know, mm -hmm. because I think when you're humble, you can get a lot of things, mm -hmm. you can get a lot mm -hmm. of information, you can, you know, um, you just are more receptive to things and respect the craft. I would just say, and for me, I just think that fashion is such an expensive business that if you don't really have the capital to just, you know, mm -hmm. make some beautiful things, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's okay to work for someone else, mm -hmm. you know, for a little while and really see how it works that when you do it, you just don't lose so much money mm -hmm. because it costs a lot of money to make clothes mm -hmm. and, um, and I think a lot of young people, they may come in and they may make something themselves, but maybe, I don't know, the inside, the seams, the things are not really done properly. Mm -hmm. And once you start saying that you're a designer and you're competing in the field, nobody cares that you made it yourself mm -hmm. and, you know, this little room and, you know, like they want it to be, mm -hmm. you're competing and, and you have to always look at it that way and don't limit yourself to mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm only going to be this kind of designer or I'm only competing. Don't look at people who are like right next to you. Look at people like 
look at Ralph Lauren. Look yeah. at someone who like yeah. is, take your level up, yeah. you know, and always see yourself in a higher yeah. place. Don't compete like mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I get but, it. But I mean <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And what does failure mean to you? Um, I don't think that there is failure. Yeah. I don't think that it is this. I don't. I think um I don't think anything of it and I don't care about it. It doesn't mean anything to me. I think that you're going to fail a lot of times when you have your own business. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you're scared to fail, you're not going to do a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to fail mm-hmm. at some things, mm-hmm. you know, and you have to be able to just accept that and be like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to try it this way this time. Right. And being caught up in what other people think about you or, oh my gosh, you're going to know my business didn't work out. So what if you, you know, there's people out there who've had like five businesses before that last mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. blew up mm-hmm. you know the person who succeeds is the person who doesn't stop trying it's like the person who is like you know what okay fine I can go in at this angle I'm gonna try this mm-hmm. one it's that relentless person mm-hmm. you know and if you can be that person mm-hmm. that's the entrepreneur mm-hmm. but everyone else you know if you try something and it didn't work once and you're done I mean do you have what it takes you know because I don't I don't know it's gonna take a lot more than yeah. that so if that's gonna deter you I just think that failure is something that you just have to be like, I don't want to fail, mm-hmm. but if it happens, so what? Mm-hmm. You know, I'll just do this again. And I know for you, you surrounded by a lot of amazing mentors. What is, how do, what what is the importance of a mentor or how does that affect um i think having someone to talk to that's been in the industry you know a longer time than you to give you perspective um i think that's really really great and Mm -hmm. and i think to have it in different aspects like you know maybe somebody who can help you financially like on your own finances Mm -hmm. how to put it together how to um somebody who um who believes in you Mm -hmm. I think that one is really special when you can find one of those that just for no reason, they just, you know, love you to death. Um, that's really nice. And, um, <laughs> and then there's also, you know, people who are giving you advice about your company, mm-hmm. you know, over time. Or people that you're just watching because you like how they, they're not, maybe not a direct mentor Absolutely. to you, but you like how they do business mm-hmm. or, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. So. And as we close off, um, yes. what inspires you? What motivates you? What pushes you to go that extra mile? Um, the bigger thing that eventually I really want to do is have this, you know, um, build this lifestyle brand that um, can transcend here in America, globally around the world. And um, on a bigger scale, create things like jobs for people, um, you know, be, help the economy um, in all parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, it doesn't have to be one specific Mm -hmm. country, Um, any country, just Mm -hmm. to help. Helping is, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever you can do, Mm -hmm. even if it's a little bit. And... um, and I would say that that really, you know, the, the inspiration of being able to build that, I think there's just something that I feel like I can do that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So it's the goal of getting closer to that. So sometimes when people say, oh, you're a designer and you're already successful, I'm like, I'm not even like close to like what I want to do. Because to mm-hmm. me, that success is like when it's functioning on its own. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when to me it's mm-hmm. like successful and you're not that worried about it, but mm-hmm. you're worried about it, but you can... Mm-hmm relax a whole lot more Mm -hmm. and you can strategize you can only think about how to make it better that's the only thing you're always thinking about but right now you know you're running and you're doing everything yourself Mm -hmm. so you're not going to get that but when you get that clarity Mm -hmm. of okay we have teams do this and Mm -hmm. this and this and then you can really as a creative director like what anyone does in any big house operate it you know and like okay this because then you're freer Mm -hmm. you know Um, and I think that the the idea of being able to get there mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. motivates me. Mm-hmm. Like the, like I feel like I can, I can touch it. I can mm-hmm. do it. 
and um, and I want to do it, and I want to do it because I just think you know, bringing a sense of you know wealth and empowerment mm -hmm. to your own self and mm -hmm. to others, and for other people to see it mm -hmm. because we've talked about this before. Of course, mm -hmm. it's difficult to to do what we're all doing, mm -hmm. but um, but it's possible. You know, I mean, yes, it's it could be rare, yeah, but it's possible. Yeah. So. Um, I, so I, I just think that like those kind of things and, and of course designers before me mm -hmm, that I really mm -hmm. like like Yves Saint Laurent mm -hmm. and Asin Alaya mm -hmm, and people mm -hmm. that I really admire um, are inspirational but I think it's just to have a really amazing company mm -hmm. that really makes a difference you know not um, something solid yeah That's the whole, that's the purpose. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love you. <laughs> I love you. You're, you're, I love it. I'm like, you guys, like, we're friends, but like, you're that girl. I'm like, oh, man, they're so cool. I love oh, them. I love you, too. you guys are, and like, you guys are literally an inspiration as to why I started this show. Just like, the cool Africans in New York, and no one's showcasing my cool friends. So <laughs> why not do a show? No, this is amazing, and I'm so oh, happy to be here, you. and I appreciate it so much. And I'm so proud of you. Thanks to be. Oh no, you thank were. you. Thanks for being part of you know my journey and my experience as well. Thank you. And that's it for today's episode of Eye of Africa. And until the next one, take care. <laughs>